Hi, this is Dr. Lynn Calabrese. I'm a professor of medicine at the Cleveland Clinic Lerner College of Medicine and director of the R.J. Fazenmeyer Center for Clinical Immunology here at the Cleveland Clinic. We'll be discussing secukinumab demonstrates a consistent safety profile with up to five years treatment in patients with psoriatic arthritis and moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Updated pooled safety analysis. This is by Dr. Phil Meese and his colleagues. And this study was uh, recently presented at ULAR 2018 in Amsterdam that I just got back from. Uh, it was a fabulous meeting, and uh, uh, PSA was a, a major uh, focus uh, of this event. So the summary of this is, is that secukinumab demonstrated a favorable safety profile during treatment for up to five years in patients with moderate to severe PSA, as well as psoriasis uh, alone. Safety profile was largely comparable across patients with psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis. So before we get to the data, I'll tell you the importance of this is, is that five-year safety data is what we want to see. Uh, the patient years are now getting up, um, and I believe that the data uh, that uh, I'll briefly describe uh, supports the long-term use in patients with psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. So how do they do this? So as you know, secukinumab is uh, approved uh, for psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. Uh, there were three large phase three stu studies that were pooled. Uh, these contain patients with moderate to severe psoriatic arthritis. Uh, uh, there were different doses of secukinumab uh, utilized in these studies, and that's important because, uh, you know, we uh, are not uh, largely using um, uh, intravenous. So this contained the IV um, uh, ramp-up dose as well as loading doses with the 75 and the 300 milligram that we're most familiar with. Uh, the loading dose was followed by maintenance of either 300, 150, or 75 uh, milligrams administered subcutaneously. Patients were initially randomized to placebo uh, or active drug, um, and at weeks 12 and 24, um, uh, uh, could be switched uh, for uh, reasons of um, uh, dose response. Uh, analysis included all patients who received at least one dose of secukinumab. So the key findings of this is a total of 1,380 patients with psoriatic arthritis, representing 3,867 patient years uh, were included in the study. It also included 5,000 patients with psoriasis, representing 10,417 patient years. And that, uh, that is what I always look at as the benchmark of a safety study. So we're getting up into five figures. Uh, a serious event in this study was occurred uh, at an exposure uh, adjusted incidence rate of 7.9 per 100 patient years in patients with psoriatic arthritis. In patients with psoriasis, the exposure adjusted incident rate was about 6.9 per 100 patient years. The most frequently reported adverse events uh, were uh, mild uh, viral upper respiratory infections occurring at an adjusted incident rate of 12.1 per 100 patient years uh, with psoriatic arthritis and 21 uh, per patients uh, with uh, psoriasis. Exposure adjusted incident rates for serious infections, candida infections, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, those are both as you know, um, uh, events of special interest, uh, and major adverse cardiac events were low and similar in patients treated with psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. Uh, there were no uh, examples of tuberculosis uh, in this study. So, you know, what's the bottom line? How do we interpret this? Well, <clears throat> secukinumab is one of the IL-17 inhibitors that we now have. Um, it is, um, uh, as a, for a class, um, you know, there is a remarkably low incidence rate of what we would call serious opportunistic infections. And I think this has added to the attractiveness of uh, drugs in this class. What about the uh, events of special interest? Well, uh, uh, candidiasis, particularly mucocutaneous candidiasis, is a, um, a complication of interest because we know from preclinical animal models that if you inhibit or knock out IL-17, um, patients develop overwhelming candida of mucosal and cutaneous surface, surfaces. Also, primary immunodeficiency diseases develop the same type of candida. The experience to date 
uh, is that, well, the, these complications are seen in a few percentage of patients who are exposed to IL-17 inhibitors and verified in this study. Um, these are not uh, serious infections. They're certainly not disseminated candidiasis, something that is really not seen within the scope of, of these trials. Uh, the serious infection rate uh, overall is in the uh, realm of um, uh, other biologic agents, so there's no surprises there, um, and there were no uh, new signals in the safety. So to me, this uh, kind of furthers the safety signature of the IL-17 class. There are certain things that we look for. I, I might also uh, mention the inflammatory bowel disease concern because um, uh, this has uh, been uh, uh, a, a, a consideration since the earliest phase trials, and there are very few cases uh, identified um, in this integrated safety days, database. So this, uh, to me, uh, reaffirms the safety of this agent, and it has not changed uh, my practice uh, at all. 